Hi, and welcome to Officers in the Presbyterian Church. In your first training video, I mentioned that there are three distinct ordained offices in the Presbyterian Church. Uh, the first one we're going to look at are ministers of the Word and Sacrament, and that's what I am. Those are folks who are called to a ministry of preaching and teaching and administrating the sacraments in the life of the church. Those are the pastors of the church, if you will. And then there is a second office uh, that are known as the elders. And elders essentially are those who are in charge of the governance of the church. Uh, so they are the folks who are going to look at and examine the programs and the policies of the church. And they're the ones that are going to keep a watchful eye to make sure that we are being faithful to God in all that we do and they provide spiritual leadership for the church as a local body and the elders together form what we call the session in another church they might call that the church board but in the Presbyterian Church the elders form what we call the session now there is another body within the local church uh, that may or may not exist depending on the size not every church has one of these and that is a board of deacons or what we refer to as the diaconate and that is the collection of those who are deacons deacons are a bit different than elders in that rather than focusing on the governance of the church they focus on the ministries and the care of the church and the roots for the diaconate go back to uh, the book of acts where what we are told is that the widows and the orphans were being neglected in terms of being fed and they needed some folks who were set aside, who were called apart to minister to their those needs so that others could focus on uh, preaching and teaching and proclaiming the Word of God. And we look back to that as the biblical roots for the diaconate or for deacons. And it comes from a word uh, in those passages in Acts, uh, the diaconia, the, the diaconia are those who, they were table servers essentially, like they were waiters, if you will, waiting on the needs of the widows and the orphans. And our word actually for Presbyterian is rooted to our word for elder. We get the word elder from a Greek word, presbyterios, which a, a presbyterios is an elder. And, uh, and it is the basis for uh, the name of our denomination because we are a denomination who is essentially led by elders. And our, the name of our denomination uh, comes from our system of government, of having elders who are called by God, elected by the people, and they are the leadership within the local congregation. So let's take a moment to stop and think about what is it that makes someone an officer? And I just mentioned two critical things within that. And the first is we believe that everyone who is an officer in the Presbyterian Church called to an ordained office is truly that. They are called by God to that office. And the, pres and the uh, local Presbyterians, the church body if you will, they recognize that call and they elect that person to serve in that position. So the Presbyterian form of government is one that is democratic in that the people, the elders who are in leadership are elected by the people. They're not appointed by a, a bishop or a pope or a cardinal, but rather instead the people elect those leaders. And that's why we're called Presbyterians. We have elders who are elected um, by the people. There are two other things uh, that you should know as an officer about what it means to be an officer. And that is that while it is democratic, it is not necessarily purely representative. Because while you are elected by the people, whenever you're voting on a matter, whatever it may be, a program or a policy of the church, it is your duty to vote your conscience, what you believe to be the right thing to do. Now this may or may not represent the views of your given body, uh, congregation or presbytery, depending on what level you're serving. Um, 
but you nevertheless are to vote your conscience. And God is, the Lord is the Lord alone of the conscience. So you need to listen to God's voice when you make decisions as an officer within the church. Another thing that I just simply want to put out there for you as an officer is to recognize that an officer, first and foremost, too, in many ways, is about character. If we were to open up uh, one of the epistles where Paul lays out characteristics of a good deacon or in some places it says an overseer or an elder. When we look at those lists, what you find is it's not about skills. You're not going to find in there uh, a lot of things about administrative skills or speaking or anything like that. What you would find instead is a list of character traits and that leaders, spiritual leaders, first and foremost, need to be people of good and high character. And that's what we look for when we are looking at the congregation. We say, who are folks that we think are called by God, people who are good character, who will lead us and lead us well? Uh, so there you have it. Those are the three offices of the church. We have ministers of the word and sacrament. We have elders. We have deacons. And those folks are called by God. They're elected by the people. When you vote, you vote your conscience, and you should always be a person of good character. Um, in our next video, what we're going to do is broaden the scope out a little bit. We've looked at the people who make the leadership, and now we're going to look at the structure of the Presbyterian Church because we are a connectional church as well. The churches of the Presbyterian Church do not stand alone. They're not congregational. We are tied to other Presbyterian churches. We are part of a broader denomination. And we're going to now move to the next video, and I'll lay that out for you there.